you love your mother? I said, in what area? In some areas he was a bigot, a racist. And so I didn't love her in that area. Do you understand that? That's why I kept saying love is not a constant. It depends on many things. So if you try to understand, we have to develop a language that's not subject to interpretation for the world. So when, when the Arab world says no, they use the word la. That means maybe, not quite no. So you can't tell whether they surrender or not. It's hard to tell. And don't forget, all nations believe the way they were brought up is the right way. The way you were brought up is not right. And if you're Jewish, your concept of God is uh, if a man takes your son's eye out, you take his son's eye out. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Jesus says if a man strikes you, turn the other cheek. All these gods are different. Which one do you believe in? Well, they're all stupid gods. They're made in the image of man. Man can't conceive of God. He's got a guy up in the clouds, you know, that makes a man and woman. Then he makes a snake which walked upright according to the Bible. And said, eat of the fruit of knowledge. So they did, and he kicked them out of heaven. Then there were angels. God said, try to better yourself to Lucifer. And Lucifer said, gee, I'd like your throne. So he kicked all the angels out. They called the fallen angels. So if God didn't have security up there, how the hell are you going to have it? So if you went, went to heaven and you looked down at the earth, you saw the Africans with the swollen bellies and the people in India begging in the streets, would that be heaven to you? If you can look down and see the earth? It's such a stupid story. I said before, if Noah's Ark carried two kinds of every animal, the boat would have been a mile long. And who cleans the shit out of that boat? So you see, all religion is very low grade. It's terrible stuff. They say God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That others might have eternal life and not perish. But the witnesses in the Bible say Jesus was crucified, he arose and ascended into heaven. Where's the sacrifice? No sacrifice. So, you see, if you really think when you're reading the Bible, I read the Bible instead of the comic strip. Because it's so fantastic, so rid ridiculous. And you wonder how people can come out of church with a straight face. <laughs> and so, I read of a young girl about 16 who said she was about to get in an airliner. And she said something came over her. She doesn't know what it is. And Jesus saved her. It took off crashed immediately and 150 people were killed and Jesus saved me. So I read in an article or heard on the radio or television that she was going to speak at the Hollywood Presbyterian Church in the U.S. So I went and she told the whole congregation how Jesus saved her. They all stood up and said, Amen, God bless you. So I walked up to the pulpit and said, He didn't want you. He wanted 150 people. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Who the hell are you? And America always tells God who to bless. God bless America. Who the hell are you to tell God who to bless? They don't even know how stupid they sound. You know, and what are you going to do with a country like that? The more ignorant the people, the longer the transition. I'm sorry. I wish I could affect the translation overnight. But there's going to be a lot of trouble. Understand that. Yes? Where do you think that the Zygast movement movement is the strongest in the world at the moment. Where is the Zeitgeist movement the strongest in the world right now? I imagine it's in America and it's growing all over the I world. Don't, I don't think so. We can let you know better after this mm. trip. <laughs> Would you, would you like to appear on the national TV? Uh, they won't let me yes, on. Yes, yes. Yeah, because I, for the first time I watched this slide as a I actually watched it on the, on the TV in Romania. On the, like, the whole country could see it. Good. That's fabulous. Yeah. If you want to come to Romania... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Romania is one of our stops. I'm not sure, but I don't think so. Then we can put you on the national TV. At well, in the evening. I, even, even in this country, I don't think we've been invited 
to any TV station it's so far. In Romania. I'm asking you. I don't know where is the strongest right now. I, I, it's not in the States. Can I yeah. I mean, there are you a lot know, of people that signed up, but totally banned in the news on the states or anything. We had one little few minute place on Fox News, which is the most conservative news station. It was very strange. <laughs> and they were positive, job. Fox News. And I think that any station, if they understood what I was talking about, they're afraid, they think, I'm a communist. Communism uses money. It has armies and navies. It has social stratification. It has banks prisons, police. We don't have any of that stuff. We have nothing in common with any existing system. Uh, what, no. what about the volcanoes? What about? I saw, I saw an interview with you in 1974. Yes. When you said that uh, catching the power of a volcano could actually power the entire world. Did anybody did any calculation about those things? Geosynthesis. Can you hear that? No, I can't. He's asking hear. about when, when you were on Larry King in 74, yes. you talked about catching the power of a volcano. Yeah. Has anybody done that? Yes. In, in California, California, Italy. Well, geothermal uh, power. Geothermal power. Okay. It's, Iceland it's is completely geothermal, pretty much. Iceland grows bananas and oranges all year round. They give them to kids. And I, they have a glass building and they have steam coming up and they use that. So imagine. If you had geothermal energy, the geologists tell me there's enough energy in the earth itself, just the heat, for thousands and thousands of years, you know, then there's the waves of the ocean. They move up and down, they can generate electricity. Then there's a temperature difference between the upper region of the ocean and the depth. The temperature difference can generate electricity. Then there's taking wire like antimony and bismuth and twisting them together, put a mass in one and the other and it becomes ice cold. So if you made your rooftop of the dissimilar metals, the sun shining on it hot makes the inside the metal cold, so you need no air conditioning. People don't understand what technology can do. They say, sometimes a woman comes over and says, there's too much technology in the world today. So I said, I'm coming to your house tomorrow, take your refrigerator, wash your machine. They don't know that, that, and they also ask another question, can a machine be better than the designer? And I know a little guy that designed the machine to pick up a freight train and empty it. He can't do that. <laughs> you go to any modern factory today where they produce Coca-Cola or anything, the machine injects all these bottles an instant with the, with, the, with the juice, right away. No man can do that. He can't move the bottles along the production line like machines do. So machines will not take over. They will dominate. Now I want to try to make sure you understand they tell you that the machines are going to take over and everybody will be ruled by machines. I'm sure you heard that crap. Yeah. That comes from Hollywood. Here's why they won't take over. First of all, they have no feelings. If you had a laptop and I smashed it in front of 20 laptops, <laughs> we'll get you. If it isn't this week or next week, we'll get you. Machines don't care. If you ran your laptop Saturday, Sunday, Monday, you give me a day off, will you? <laughs> they don't care. Machines have no ambition. They don't want to rule people. That's a human attribute. So the message is this. Now, when I was a kid, a man would look out of an airplane and he'd say, I'm about a mile and a half high. With Doppler radar, I goes down, his ear, come back, and says, you're 5,330 inches off the ground. No human can do that. Nine months ago, computers can handle 1,000 trillion bits of information per second. No group of humans can do that. So, is it a machine takeover? No. They'll be assigned these tasks. In airplanes today, you're safer when the machine tells the pilot exactly how high he is. Do you understand? Otherwise, he just guess. So, when you have machines that are really intelligent, say an airplane's coming in for landing on six separate circuits, not one computer, six separate circuits, and there's a crack in the runway due to an earthquake, the machine will fly around it. It depends on how smart the designer is. 
most machines are dumb. I mean, they, they reflect the designer. But you can design automobiles with sensors on it. So if you got mad at me and you tried to drive your car into my car, it would stop. Do you understand what I'm saying? And when I was a kid, if you worked in an automobile factory, they shape fenders and parts of the car by machine. If a guy put his hand in there, when the machine came down, he lost his hand. But today there's sensitive de devices. When you put your hand in that machine stops. I don't know if you know that. When I was a kid, women used to operate elevators. They turned a crank, never quite got to the floor. I was working up and back. Today you press 20, it stops exactly there. All human systems are obsolete. If you don't understand that, let's say you're a dermatologist. You work on skin diseases. Now, when you go to medical school, they say this is psoriasis, this is measles. They tell you, you've got to remember those images. In the next 10 years, you hold your hand up and it's scanned and it gives you the latest treatment. You don't need a diagnostician. You can make it an hour and a half in a laptop. Most lawyers will be phased out. <clears throat> 15 years, most engineers will be phased out. Huh? You can make a laptop, it won't look like the ones today, and you talk to it, you say, I want a 17-story building, I want it to be used for medical research, and in the meantime it's connected to all the other industries. Right now, laptops are connected to people. In the future, it'll be connected to the farms, production centers, Every lab will be connected. So when you find the answer to heart disease, the lights will blink and say, now we can work on cystic fibrosis. See, in other words, a lot of research will be done by machines, too. And then machines will eventually surpass people in ideas, mathematics, chemistry, but not feelings. Machines do not have feelings. They don't... When something breaks, they say, oh my God, how awful that is. They don't have that. So don't worry about machines taking over. Hollywood does that. Machines take over. But in the real world, they don't. Real world machines don't care. I don't know how I can tell you that. When a, when a, a soldier operates a guided missile to kill people, it's man that pollutes the atmosphere. It's man that kills fellow man. It's man that dumps poisons into the ocean. If you didn't know that, the U.S. Army dumped 65 tons of nerve gas off the coast of Miami. So how can you love the country? Soldier says, orders are orders. The soldier is a pinhead, obviously. So we have no soldiers in the future. And nobody obeys me. There's nobody that tells you what to do. All man-made laws are full of shit. Only laws that count is natural law. If you don't get nutritious food or enough sleep, you get sick. Those are the real laws. We have to find out how we relate to nature, but not man-made laws. Man signs treaties with other nations. If that treaty doesn't serve their interest, they violate it. The U.S. violates many treaties, so does Japan. It doesn't mean a thing. A marriage certificate doesn't mean that the guy is going to be loyal to you. That depends on his sex drive. You understand what I mean? If you love another person, no person can cause you to separate. If you love another person, love, the word love will be thrown out in the future, and in its place will be extensionality, meaning how extensional are you to that person? How do you enhance their lives? So if you meet a guy and he's extensional, he's interested in your field, whatever you do, he wants to know and you both share ideas, you grow together. But if he goes out and travels and you just wipe the baby's ass and send it to school and cook, you're retarded. You understand? Now some people are going to get mad at me. Children, children in the future diminish considerably because Somebody once asked Roxanne, do you have any children? She said, that's my only gift to the world. No children. So you have children, and they're a pain in the ass. They say the same thing over again. Lies, glass, daddy, chair, lies, ketchup, you know. And they don't say anything new. They're boring as shit. <laughs> and, and if you don't understand me, if you already have children, you have to learn how to handle them. 
you're not allowed to touch a jet engine unless you go to school for a long time. But anybody can raise a kid. I want to tell you how I raise my kid. I just have kids as a result. Another time a girl came over and said, why am I here? She thought God put her here for some reason. That's because your father didn't use a condom. <laughs> but you're not here to direct the world. That's an ego trip. When a person thinks they're here to help make the world a better place, that feels good. But the earth is neither good nor bad. It shakes, it kills people. There are tornadoes, lightning kills people. So whatever happens is real. What you think should have happened is not real. So you suffer not by the world, but your projections of what the world should be. You see, people are killed in automobile accidents today more than all the wars. But nobody, nobody had designed cars not to hit each other. There are metals, which I don't have here with me now, called memory metals. How many of you heard of them? Well, I'm glad you saw the video then. <laughs> well, there are metals with a memory. They now make a fabric with a memory. And the doctor ties a surgical knot. And he straightens out the fabric and he sticks it to the skin and the heat of the body causes it to tie a surgical knot. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hi. Um, I'm sorry to be so persistent with a, a really That's sensitive right. question. But, um, you know, as you remember, my last question I was talking about you know, fascism and the feeling that yes. we're all living in increasingly uh, oppressive um, circumstances. And um, earlier you mentioned Noah's Ark. Do you think we need to be making some kind of do you think we need to be making some Noah's Ark to continue the survival of the Zygites movement in the Venus Project? Well, I can answer that question indirectly. A very wealthy group came over to my lab one day and said, can you design a city for us that would be sustainable with a high wall around the photoelectric cells, heat concentrators? about a process like the Venus Project? No, somebody came to see me and wanted to know if I could design a city for them that would be sustainable under a wide range of negative conditions. So I said that in the old days, yes, but today people can launch crap over your wall and if they see you all eating there, they'll invade, the minorities will invade any community that's sustainable. So you can't live to yourself anymore. You must invite all the nations to join in common heritage, share the Earth's resources. Where do you think America got America from? It stole it from the Indians and Spain and Mexico. After America stole all the land we needed, we then put up a sign, Thou shalt not steal. <laughs> now this is true of England. They said the sun never sets on it. Where the hell they get all that land? You think people said, come on over, take some of our land, enjoy it? No, they took it. And they kill people. And U.S. does the same thing over and over again. All the established countries kill to, to get land. Then they tell you not to steal. When we won the war with Germany, we stole their rockets and brought them to right field. Then we kidnapped their engineers and brought them over to America. Government does whatever the hell it wants to do. If you kill somebody, watch out. Because you don't live in the same world. There's no such thing as civilization yet. You all believe that, well, nowadays we're civilized. In the old days they weren't. No, we're not yet. As long as there's war, poverty, hunger, deprivation, <laughs> we're not civilized. Now, if communism wins, they have an ideal, but they don't know what to do once they get in. They don't know how to make mass housing or grow food or transportation. They don't know how to do prefabricated houses. So your problems are not political, they're technical. Everything that you have, your electric lights, your eyeglasses, your automobiles, your airplanes, are all technical. No congressman or senator ever, ever increased the food supply for the nation. They never devised any safety devices, traffic lights or anything. What the hell do they do? They don't know anything. They can't do anything. Politicians have never been able. There's not one politician that made safer houses that don't burn or new fire engines or something. Make nothing. 
Kennedy, everybody loved Kennedy. He was a nothing guy. Jack, By nothing, I mean doesn't do anything. Question yes. over here. Yes. Um, I've heard that you want to join the Ku Klux Klan, one yes. group of the Ku Klux Klan, in order to change yes. their opinions. Yes. Uh, how did you do that? Well, how many of you want to hear that? How I changed the Ku Klux Klan? Well, there was a guy that had a war surplus store. His name was Lou Merlin. He's dead now. He he was a member of the Klan because he always talked to me a little bit about then one day he said to me, you're a smart guy, what do you think of the Klan, the Ku Klux Klan? I said it was a great organization, but it didn't go far enough. That will put, what do you mean? <laughs> if you attack, it doesn't work. Always say, it's a great idea, but it doesn't go far enough. And I said, what do you mean? Then you can do what you want to do. So if you use logic, it doesn't work. Logic is bullshit. Never works. Anyway, what happened? with Lou Merlin. He said, what do you do with all the lenses you buy from my surplus store? I said, I have a lab and I experiment with them. He says, I'd like to see it. So I took him to my lab and he was so impressed. He said, Jock, will you come on down to the clan, that's what he spoke, and tell him about what you're doing? I think you're a smart guy. So I said to Lou Merlin, they won't listen to me. He says, I'll get them to listen to you. I'm in charge of that group. So she said, I want you guys to listen to Jock. And listen, and then the way it gets through, if you have any questions, you can ask them. And he forced them to listen. So I said to Lou, how is it that you can look at a person, this is what he did, and tell us all about him, and he never knew the guy. He can look at a person, that guy doesn't think, this guy is lazy, just by looking at him. I said, Lou, will you teach us how to do that? He says, come on down to the clan meeting, I'll teach you how to do that. I didn't think I can teach you anything, Jock. I said, well, you can teach me that if it works. So I came down to the clan with photographs, and I projected them onto a screen. And Lou said, this man you projected, he looks like a good citizen. He looks like a patriot, a war veteran. All projected his own values into the character. I said, Lou, is there anything else you can add to that? He said, no. So I pulled the bottom of the picture out, which I got in the post office, wanted by the FBI for subversive action against the United States. And Lou didn't know how to behave, but the group was laughing at him for the first time. He always said a lot of things, but nothing was ever put to test, you know? So I said to the guy, you guys stop laughing at Lou. We all make mistakes, so Lou made a mistake this time. If I didn't defend Lou, it wouldn't work. That's called strategy called human engineering. Some people can't understand reason, so you have to use engineering. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I then said, Lou, I'm going to do another test to give you a chance, and it's a record we had in the old days. The record ran about 15 minutes. The first 10 minutes, a guy was talking in an Oxford accent about aeronautics, and he said, he couldn't see the guy, it's just a record, a voice. He has a heavy Oxford accent. He's talking about aeronautics. Lou says, I see a skinny Englishman with a bald head and thick eyeglasses. You know, he's projecting his own values. Then the image comes on later. It's a black guy raised in England. Lou looked at him. He's a goddamn nigger talking like an Englishman. I said, no, Lou, that black man was brought up in England. He's brought up in Germany. He speaks with a German accent. He says, you mean to say niggers behave like niggers because they're brought up in a nigger environment? This is his language. You know what? I said, that's it, Lou. If I took your kids and brought it up in that neighborhood, they talk just like niggers. That's right. You're right. Mm -hmm. If black people talk that way, your kid would talk that way if you were white. If I raise them with a black family. Do you understand that? So Lou said, I can't believe that. So I showed him some movies of dogs being trained and animals being I used to train dogs to lead the blind. They used to walk with a white stick when I was a kid. So I used to train the dog to lead them. And a sweet old lady would walk over and pet the dog and say, what a nice dog. And I'd say, no, I could have trained that dog to tear soldiers to pieces or help the blind. Dogs are neither good nor bad, neither are people. 
and reflect their culture. So the Southerners used to go out and shoot niggers in the ass. This was their experience. They get in a car, policemen, shooting blacks in the behind uh, because they can get away with it. And so I never could talk to them. If I even try to mention something, it would be a nigger lover from the North. You understand? So I got to see as a kid how people get to be the way they are. If you're brought up with an Irish family, you say, well, you look at the Irish flag. Right? He's a fine boy. You speak with that brogue. And if you're brought up in Italy, you say, come on, they eat. This is good the food. See, that's normal to that country. So all of us are victims of culture. When we say, why can't people think their way out? Well, at the University of Princeton, somebody finally got up and said, I think man can think. Another guy he said, Nikolai Tesla invented the wireless. No wires connected. Where did he get that from? There's nothing in nature like that. So I told him, I said, when you bought an electric wire from an electric store years ago, they, push, they used to push it in a bag. But if you wind it around a cardboard spool, it doesn't get tangled up. But sometimes the wire was broken. So they connected two clips to the ends to see if the current would flow through. And it means the wire wasn't broken. Many years later, if you bought fine wire, they wrapped it around a small spool, and they put it inside the big spool. So when you tested the big spool to see if the wire was broken, it induced the current in, in the spool not connected. That's where Tesla got it from. If you don't understand me, if you put one coil of wire near another coil and run an electric current, it induces a current in the other coil. That's where Tesla got it from. Nobody ever invented anything radical. It's so Serially developed so slowly, you can't see the connection. So when they tell you, uh, they tell you things like Nikolai Tesla or any other man was ahead of his time. Not true. Uh, Inventors spoke to people that talked of gears and levers. They didn't speak to the average person. So their environment was different. They say, how can you invent so many things? You have an inventive mind. Or they say, you are gifted. If you're gifted, why the hell give them any credit for it? You know, it's like a beauty contest. If a girl wins a beauty contest, I'm against that because she didn't make her face. She had a face made of mud, and she shapes it and straightened it out. Worked five years on it, you can give her a medal. But why the hell give a person a prize? Because they inherit ability. Nobody inherits anything. That's bullshit, too. All that you inherit from your parents is the shape of the nose, the color of the eyes, or genetic characteristics. But you don't inherit values. Those are learned. Stay away from the Swedes. They're dumb. Get a dumb Polak to clean out your cellar. That's, that's where you get it from. You get it from your environment. No kid was ever born speaking Chinese. Even though that civilization had been speaking Chinese for centuries, no Chinese baby ever came out and, and spoke Chinese. They had to go to school. No American baby or English baby or German baby ever spoke German without training. So they assumed that if you took a Chinese baby and a Greek baby, the Chinese baby would learn Chinese faster. They tried it. They both learned at the same rate. So you don't inherit characteristics that your parents learned. You can inherit the color of the eyes, the shape of the lips, the ears, physical diseases. You can inherit propensity toward heart disease, but you can't inherit learned information. Okay, another question. Yeah. Yes. Um, I would like to ask you a question. Uh, I think all of us uh, knows about the nature of tragedy was happening in the Gulf of Mexico. And I would like to ask you do you think that this, this event can ignite uh, humanity finally to start changing from the fossil resources to one of those resources what you mentioned in the movie? Because now everyone can see what war can cause in the world. Well, if you know what shapes human behavior, you can design a society. For example... Jack, Jack the, the question question is uh, the tragedy in the 
put Mexico with the oil? Do you think that that will generate people to stop using fossil fuels and go to a different source no, of energy? No, it just helps a little, but it doesn't put an end to it. The oil companies... Or, or, I'm sorry, or mainly put pressure on government from people who see... Yes, the oil companies the control the media, and to a large extent they can countermeasure that. You know, uh, I don't say it doesn't help, it helps. But really the problem is, what do you do with oil spills? That's really a problem, not is it the oil company. The oil companies are in business to make money, and they want oil used. If you have solar energy, it's a threat to the oil companies. So they say it's not that efficient. Whatever they say, they could be lies, rumors, as long as you get them out there, you can delay it. Do you understand? The electric companies out here, they're trying to harness the Thames River, put turbines under the water. So as the tide flows in, they generate electricity. As it flows out, it generates electricity. But the electric companies don't like that. You understand that? Any company doesn't like anything new because it's a threat. If you have a plastic company and it, it took you three million dollars to outfit the plant, you want to wait till you can amortize your cost back before you change your machinery to something else. You've got to get what you put in back. So the whole world is delayed and we live in a very primitive culture because we still kill people. The electric chair or we give them lethal injections as George Carlin once said, we use cotton sanitized with alcohol before we give them a lethal injection. <laughs> so I'm trying to tell you how stupid our society is. So when the person said to me, will there be horror movies in the future? It'd be movie, any movie about any society would be a horror movie. If, if, to the future, you understand? Yes. Yeah, the Venus Project, for example, say it gets to go ahead tomorrow. What are there in the way of plans, um, technical schematics and stuff like that, to, to put it to practice straight away? Are there any blueprints to put the Venus Project into practice if we could do it tomorrow? You could have done it in 1927. <coughs> What kind of blueprints? He's asking if there are blueprints to, to put it in. Well, we have uh, drawings and, and we burned a lot of blueprints about a year ago because we were going to move to another country. So uh, we, I had blueprints on skyscrapers, machines to do the work of people, many blueprints. But we, I can do them over again. So we make movies now showing people what life could be like, because they want to know what will life be like in Venus? If machines do everything, what will people do? Well, people go, I don't know if you know this, we have shopping centers in the States, and kids hang out there from high school and college. They hang out in the shopping malls. There should be art centers, music centers, places for kids to go. They have no place to go. Also, the is very did stupid. you ask that, Ben, about the blueprints? Consider, you know, this is my wife, and, and have this, oh, this property, this property. Now he's asking about what the notion, what the nature of um, relationships would be like in the future. Would people own their, like today, oh. own their wives? They don't own things. anything in the future. They, they don't own other people. No. They're free to live with you if they want to, but you don't own anybody. You don't. Uh, you can't order somebody to go down and get me a sandwich. You go get it yourself, unless you're in a wheelchair. Understand? But other than that, the whole concept of ownership is gone. You have access to airplanes, sailboats, you train how to use them if you want, and you go wherever you want to go without filling out any forms. Or without coming up to Fresco and saying, can I take a sailboat? I say, well, there's 15 people before you. We turn out more sailboats than people check out. You understand? No more filling out forms, no more bills, nothing like that. All gone. So you're a very different kind of people brought up under those conditions. Any other questions? Yes? I have about a million questions, but I'm really excited to explore people who are in this, but I just wondered what your role is for this situation. What your sort of role in this situation is. I'm really new to this, I don't know. 
what my role is. I don't have any particular role. I identify with this direction and I work with it as I work towards it in any way that I can. I, I've worked on the books, the videos, I did the cement work on all the buildings, I do emails, I do, you know, I, I laid out the books, I, I, um, I write in some degree with Jacques when we're working on, on new books or letters or answer questions and answers for articles. I just so do everything I can. As well. I, I'm, I, I'd like to get some of your background. I've seen um, Jack has an aeronautical background of some sort, but I really don't know. I'm really new to this. I'm really sorry if this is stuff that nobody really knows. But What's really my background? How, how you've come to here. How, how have you sort of your background into coming to this sort of uh, idea? I heard some of Jacques' lectures on tape. And it was more interesting than anything I'd ever heard. So I, I, wherever I was, I, I got, I, I left there and started going to his lectures in the 1970s. to give lectures at his home about three days, three nights a week, and we have some of those lectures on our website. Yeah, they're really interesting. In his house. In his, he held them in his house. Yeah, and he charged at that time three, two dollars for members. We had a, we had an organization called Socio Cyberneering. Um, and, uh, and engineering and uh, applied to the social system, um, socio cyber and engineering and technology applied to the social system. But we changed that name when we moved to Venus because people, it was before they even used the word cyber, became fashionable, and people couldn't pronounce socio cyberneering, let alone spell it. So we changed it to the Venus Project. It's nothing to do with metaphysics or the planet Venus or the one word government or anything that they say out there. So um, it's just because we lived in Venus. So um, I, don't, I don't know. I went to the lectures and I ended up taking his drafting courses and, um, and he taught me how to do architectural models so then I started a business doing architectural models and renderings and that helped support the project. All the money went towards supporting the project because during, during, for 35 years we had no outside funding whatsoever. <laughs> when, um, so I had that business and during that time Jacques was working on a lot of models and then we were filming the models and I edited it just out of necessity because we couldn't afford it having somebody else edit it. So, you know, I just worked at it like that. Um, I, the final question is just, I'm, like I said, I'm this, but the tag, Zeitgeist, the tag being this project, uh, when I heard uh, that my friend was involved, uh, seen as Zeitgeist, there was this enormous barrier and wall put up in my head that what is that? Is some sort of cliquey group or a religious sort of thing? And I wondered, is it is it dangerous to label or is it positive? Is that actual fact to give it an identity and a label is actually a really good idea because it gives people an sure. understanding of where it is and what it is. Sure, we wouldn't be able, people wouldn't be able to talk about it. They wouldn't be able to associate anything with it. The the Venus project was in existence for like thirty five years before Peter came along, but uh, Peter put his first film out and had a following of over 50 million people had watched it. it. It even went over the count, so we really don't know. And um, so we wanted to leave the name Zeitgeist Movement because that had a following, and we were already using the term the Venus Project in our books and our videos and everything, so we just merged merged it with the separate names. But it's one of the same, essentially. I know, I think a lot of people who joined the Zeitgeist Movement today even don't know about the Venus Project in some instances, but it's the activist arm of the Venus Project and is to help support that direction. Because a lot of people came to Peter in for, during the first film and said, well, what do we do, where do we go? He said, I don't know. And I sent him, after I saw the Zygites, the first one, I sent him Jacques' book, The Best That Money Can't Buy, and he immediately identified with it and came out and started filming. And a year later came out with with the film, the second film, but he came to our place many times between and would sit there with the recorder when Jacques talked to him for days and days and days. And you can see the progression of, of Peter's thinking even through his different lectures as they changed too. So, um, you know, we're, we're all growing and evolving in this direction, learning more. Thank you. Yeah. Here, did you ask before? Oh. No. So Jacques, I'm fascinated to hear what you've said. I've got lots of questions, but I'll just stick with one, which is about uh, not having money in the future. Yes. And I can see that when things are abundant, there's no need for money. Yes. But won't there always be some things that are scarce? 
yes. even though there are even though technology makes more and more things available, there will be cutting edge medical treatments or new iPads or whatever when there isn't enough for everybody who wants them. So how will they be allocated? Okay, that's a very good question too. First of all, I said uh, you can today you can stick your arms in the two units and move them, and you can do surgery from New York to Iceland. If a person needs an operation in Iceland, you're a doctor. You can manipulate the stuff in Iceland. You understand what I mean? By sticking your fingers in. Now, nurses, when you say hemostat, they give the doctor a surgical instrument. Uh, when you say uh, clamps, then they give you clamps. But there's a thing called a turret head lathe, which has all the drilling bits and everything on one unit turns. So in the future when a doctor says he must start a turns and he takes that, he doesn't need a nurse. You understand? Women, for example, when they hold a baby, some women, they support it well. Sometimes husband says, let me hold it. And he holds it and the baby goes like that. You men don't know how to hold a baby, see? Really, it's the pressure all around. Men, if you just have pressure on the bottom, the baby feels insecure. So I designed a basket that the baby goes in and inflates and deflates and it cried when you took it out. When the mother took it out of the basket, the basket handled the baby better than the mother. So if you know what it is that children like or don't like, and if you want to say what shapes their values, like we don't order kids to do exercise because they don't like it. So we build a big lake in all the cities, lakes all over, with a hill in the middle, 150 feet high. There's a craft shop where you can make anything you want to make. To get there, you've got to row a boat, you've got to climb the hill. So to get to the art centers, you have to go up a hill and down and around, so you get plenty of exercise. We designed it, it's built into the city. Don't order people to do things. Get them to want to do things. So nobody owns a bicycle. But there are hundreds of bicycles. You just get on and use it. Leave it where you go. Nobody owns anything anymore. Do you understand that? Now, the only thing you might own is the paintings or sculpture. If you do clay modeling or art painting, like let's say he had about 500 paintings, originals. When the, when the new society comes in, we walk over and say, would you mind putting your paintings on tour so everybody in the world can enjoy them? He said, no, they're mine. We put that in the morning paper. He said, no, they're mine. Okay? Yeah, That'll so technology it. will make more and more things available, oh, like these wonderful, you never dreamed of. these wonderful medical treatments. So I'm very keen that we can get there as quickly as possible. But there's still going to be things where there isn't enough to go around for everybody. Like what? Well, if you can name something. There always will be some better medical treatment, or there will be a better, okay. A, okay. a better bicycle. Let me answer the better medical treatment first. Mm -hmm. Today, when they make automobiles, there's a guy that used to spray rubber under the car so the rain won't drive <coughs> you crazy. That dampens the sound. But a man has to do that once in front of a computer. Spray the bottom, then from then on the computer does it. So if you get a guy that does good surgery, and you make a photograph of every move he makes. Then you can set your computer so it doesn't have tremors. The human has 10 tremors per second. Computer has none. So when the best surgeon does surgery, we record every move he makes. And the computer moves the instruments much better. And the suturing, man can only suture so fast. Machines go And you don't mean, when, when the hell was that done? In other words, Machines will surpass man in most areas, except feeling. Feelings. Now, somebody said, can you give machines feelings in the future? Well, if I gave feelings to your automobile, and you were driving on a freeway, it might say, where the hell did you learn to drive? You want to get us killed? You know, you don't want feelings in an automobile. Here's what you want. You want it to keep its distance from other cars, not hit anyone, but you don't need feelings. Feelings serve no purpose in machines. You understand what that means? 
Now, if you run a sewing machine nine days, it doesn't say give me a day off either. It doesn't feel. So we think that emotions are generated and amplified in scarcity. In other words, they say, this guy has five Rolls Royce. It was a face of scarcity. But if everybody had the finest cars in the world, nobody would say, he has five Rolls Royces. The voice, the way it's made, is because of scarcity. But if everybody had access to things, if you came to my house and you saw a baby grand piano, you might think, gee, I wish I had one for my cousin or sister. But you could have one for your cousin. So envy disappears. You understand? Envy is born in scarcity. Most human behavior is generated by scarcity. Now, if you get rid of scarcity, humans behave very different, extremely different. But they tell you that that's human nature, greed. Because ever since people have been around the earth, there's been scarcity. So they hoard, grab all they can grab, because they live in scarcity. But you people that are upper middle class, your kids will leave food in the plate. You say, you eat everything in the plate because there are starving people out there. That comes from scarcity. But if all the food of the future of restaurants were hermetically sealed and fed or used in fertilizer, uh, we would have no waste. We recycle everything. Even the package that you wrap the food in, when you put it in the ground, it may take three weeks, but it contains nutrients for the soil. So everything in the future will be of service to men, humankind. Just one and last women, question. Women will use the same washrooms, same swimming pool. They'll swim nude when they're very young to do away with peeping toms and fetishes. And you can't sell magazines with nude girls in it because no one will buy it. Do you understand what I'm saying? In other words, people think I'm depriving people. I know what makes peeping toms, and that's scarcity. They never get to see a female's body, so they look in windows. And girls girl says, that's a terrible thing. No, it's the result of this stinking society. If you boys and girls use the same washroom when they're very young, they will look at each other and that'll be over in three or four days, and they'll go on. You couldn't sell pictures of nude people. Now, if you bring a nice, healthy boy up with six women, uh, selected women, very effeminate women, that move their hands and face different than men. Women say, oh, did I see a gorgeous hat? The face, the hand movements are very different. So if that boy is brought up with six women, very effective, he will move just like a woman. You give me a goddamn fact. He's not a goddamn anything. It's your own projections. There's nothing wrong with anybody. Everybody behaves perfectly normal where they're coming from whether it's Irish dialect or Swedish. Yes. Do you... How do you envisage that um, uh, children would be brought up in the future? How would children be raised? First, they'd be not raised by the family. But you don't take them away from the family. You can't do that. You have summer camp, and you show television, kids swimming, learning, in a learning environment. And normal people will tend to send their kids to summer camp. At summer camp, we say, your father was raised in the Philippines, and this is a custom that he grew up with. So be nice to your father, even though he says you can't change human nature. Whatever he says, it's normal to where he's coming from. We teach kids anthropology, sociology, social change. We teach them as much as we can so they understand, not tolerate. I don't like the word tolerate, because it means to put up with, you know. I want kids to understand the world they live in. Uh, what about breastfeeding? Okay. How about from when uh, the child is very young, from an infant? Uh, breastfeeding. How would they be raised from that well, early stage? During the transition, all that will be in. After the transition, children suck on anything, your ear or anything. They think suckling is a reflex, natural, human nature. They don't. If you put them on your knee, they'll suck your knee. <laughs> and they, they have no preferences. Now, they told me, they got mad at some of those guys. They said, how does a bird know how to build a nest? It never, the mother fish never, never gets fish together and says, this is how you get to the spawning grounds, opens the map and shows all the fish. No, 
the fish do it, and the, the scientists have to account for that. So how do the fish know how to get to the spawning grounds that's thousands of miles away? They said they do it instinctively. They might as well say they do it by bula bula. <laughs> Instinct doesn't tell you a damn thing. She's naturally gifted. Well, that doesn't tell you anything. It doesn't tell you how she draws or creates music. What the Venus Project does, it shows kids how we get to be the way we are. So I took, I took a bird egg out of the nest, and I raised the bird bird out of the nest. And when it was pregnant again with eggs, it never, never built a nest unless it was born in a nest. The eyes imprint. But I tell you this in school, which is false, that nature is so wonderful that it accommodates, that it will make some insects look like a leaf. You ever see that? And some insects look like something else. So I said, nature just nature doesn't do anything of the kind. If an insect is born that looks like a leaf, and he stays in a white sandy area he's picked on, so he keeps crawling, and when he gets to an area that looks like his body, they stay there. And the naturalists think that nature gave them that ability. It's just the opposite. They think that camels have wide hoofs so they won't sink in the sand. They have wide hoofs and they don't sink in the sand. They don't have wide hoofs not to sink in the sand. They also in school, medical school, tell you you have eyebrows. When you sweat, it takes the sweat off to the side and doesn't go in your eyes. Then they say that's the purpose of the eyebrows. Another doctor said the purpose of the eyes are to see with. So I said, come with me into a dark room. And I said, see. <laughs> so I can't see anything unless you turn a light on. So you don't see with your eyes. Light enables you to see. And the back lobe of the brain, the occipital lobe, interprets the vision. So people think they have fingernails to scratch insects off their skin. You know, if God made insects and he makes a fingernail, then he's a horse's ass. You don't need to make fingernails if you make no insects. But anyway, people are born many different ways. If you were born with a big bony growth and somebody came at you, when you put that there, you'd be protected. Animals do not have horns to protect themselves, as it says in your school book. They have horns. If animals had horns to protect themselves, where's the horns on a rabbit? <laughs> and when you cough and sneeze, what's the purpose of that? To infect other people? Why don't you put everything in the book? The reason the guy sneezed is to launch the germs at you, so you get a cold. You understand? Man projects his own values into everything. This includes scientists. They talk of the Big Bang it was the beginning of everything. What was the day before the Big Bang? Nothing. There were a lot of stupid stuff in science and technology. If a man were a scientist, He'd say, what makes wars? Why do people kill each other? He'd get step out of his field and ask questions in all areas. But when you train a guy in chemistry, he thinks as a chemist. You train a guy in structural engineers, he's always looking at structures and engineering. See, but people in the future will be trained in the history of civilization, how they used to feed Christians to lions and torture people and stretch them apart. All the stupid things that man did do will be in your school book. Now, you know the witch hunts in Salem, in, Ma in Ma Salem, Massachusetts? We used to burn women, mostly set them ablaze if they thought differently. Now, did you know this, that if you found a witch, you got her bank account and land? So you look for as many witches as you can. They, they don't put that in your school books. Did yes. you have a follow-up yes. with that? Yeah, I just wanted to, to ask.